So I had a look at some of the exploded views I found online of the uh, spindle on here and this you can just see there's just a very slight sign of a of a keyway so this is on a keyway so I'm going to get a bearing puller and see if I can pull it off It's that off. Okey-dokey, let's have a look at the rest of it then. See, the thing is, I say these bearings don't need changing, but I would expect that to spin a bit freer than that. But there is no play in it. Anyway, <clears throat> let's carry on and see if we can get them out. So I found an old screwdriver that I've managed to bend, hopefully it'll fit in here. Shit, still up. I have to grind a bit more of it. Once they're loose, you can get another screwdriver through the hole to undo them. And then once they're very loose, you can do them with your fingers. But they're a bit of a pain in the arse to get out. sod there you go see this I mean I know there's no oil in there but I think that should spin more than I spin it for fuck's sake so I think these bearings ain't all that clever should be able to get this retainer off now it's only a bearing retainer Now I'll be able to put a bit of wood on this end and tap this out. I'll get rid of this all this gear before it goes for a Burton. I shall start off gentle. That's going to jump right out. That's it. 
Right, that's free, so I'm guessing these will slide off. A little collar there. Another little collar, I better try and keep this stuff in order. him out. There's the two gears that are in there. Looks pretty clean in there, don't look like there's any crap or anything in there. I did clean it out when I had to change that ball gear on something. Alright. these bearings this bearing does feel quite loose on here yeah, obviously they would tighten up but yeah and they do need changing of course I've got to get the housings out which ain't going to be easy Got to get this bearing off of here somehow, which I reckon is going to be a bit tricky. So, this bearing has got to come right off of here. I don't think that's going to be an easy task. I don't know how I'm going to do that. I destroy it to take it off. Right, I'm going to have to give that some fault. Right, this one is a 32007X P3. Well, now I think the P3 is the tolerance on. I mean, you could use something to force into here, but this is only that light Ali Zamak stuff, and I don't know. I went now break. This would break before I would get the bearing off with it. Spindle looks all right, don't. All right. Well, that's the spindle out for now, anyway. I'm just going to see if I can tap the other half of the bearings out. Sorry, Finn. that just fell on the dog. <coughs> Sorry, Biggles. <coughs> right, that's out. I want to keep that though for pushing the other one in. 
Uh, the upside is they do go up against a stop, so no problem with that. All right, see if I can do the same with the other side. Tap that out. Brush the front one out now. bearings are out so the way I got this bearing off I busted all the balls off it they're not balls they're all long balls clamp this uh, mazak oh shit it's still off clamp this bit of mazak up to the top here warmed it up and just tapped it off with the bottom ridge here and it came off quite easy, but I better get the rest of it off before it cools down in case it tightens up again. So there's the cage with all the bearings that I've got off. And this bearing was on up there, like this way around. And I warmed it up, just about had enough room to get a screwdriver down at that angle onto this ridge. Just tapped it a few times and it came off quite easy. Which is a bit of a relief because if that had been really stuck on like a bastard I might have had a problem with that. But it's off, just got to get the new ones. It's not absolutely critical. But I would like to try and get this label out of here and then stick it back in after I've done what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to try and eat it up from the back and see if I can get it out. Yep, I'll stick that somewhere and stick it back in later on. Got to be careful cleaning these things, especially around the back area, the side that normally goes into the lathe. This ain't so bad, but everything on here is very sharp. Obviously, never intended to be touched by human hands, but they are dangerous. I bought these fibre brushes, I think they was on Amazon. They're pretty good, they're quite stiff, but they are really good for cleaning teeth out in the wheels. And they're just not that abrasive, so they don't wear any metal away. Don't want to bore you, but just indulge me just for a minute. This is the uh, the lever that moves you up from neutral, forward and reverse. But it's just such a well made lovely thing. And you've got a roll pin that I've just knocked out goes through here, which, and the head comes off. That's where the roll pin goes through this little hole here. And then this little, piston comes right through that and then there's a spring in there which it acts against and you've got the thread there that goes into the, it's in the parts cleaner at the moment, the other bit but um, just such a lovely thing just so well made, I mean the work involved in just making that anyway, I've got to get on The motor is most definitely in need of some TLC. Very, very manky and gunged up. 
I've got some service hole coming. I might wait till I've got that and clean it up with that because that is really good electrical cleaner. I cleaned the motor up. It was absolutely shitty. It was inside on these faces and on the armature. There was a good, I would say, 16th, 8th of an inch of like thick tar, almost like tar, like almost wax. The only way I could really clean it all up was to completely get it in the parts washer and give it a good scrub. So it's all been completely submerged in in the water now. Not that it hadn't been submerged in water when the fireman were putting the fire out, but um, hopefully it'll be all right. I've ordered some new bearings because I think they're knackered. Well, they will be knackered because they've been been in water anyway. So I've got some new bearings coming, so I'll pull them and put the new bearings on when they come. Don't suppose it's done it any good, but hopefully it will have a bit more life left in it. I've got the actual lathe bed all masked up and painted. That's ready to go now. All the rack is cleaned up. It quite surprised me the rack was in two halves. I didn't realise till I took it off. Um, yeah, so what I want to do is get the bench cleared if I can. Still need to do the gearbox. Need to do all the actual switches and the VFD and then I need to do a bit of work on the stand so I've got to wait for the uh, new spindle bearings to come the bearings for the motor and I'll probably put new bearings in the gearbox when I get it to bits so for now I'm going to have to clear my bench off and try and manhandle the actual lathe bed onto the bench so I can do something with a stand. Right, well that's about it for this week. And I'll um, see you next week. Hopefully the bearings turn up before then. And I can get a bit more progress. Start getting it all back together. Still got to do this stand though. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.